Which Bible translation is truly more accurate, the King James Bible or the Geneva Bible? There's this conspiracy going around about how the King James Bible changed the words of the Geneva Bible to suit King James's liking. And many even argue that the Geneva Bible is a better translation because it was the Bible used by the pilgrims. Take, for example, John 3, 36. The Geneva Bible and the King James Bible, KJV, present slightly different translations. And those differences can significantly impact how we understand belief, obedience, and what it means to live out our faith. Stick with me, because by the end of this video, you'll not only see how these two versions differ, but also uncover a deeper connection explored in my book, elucidations. The answer isn't as simple as you would think. Let's break down these translations and reveal the real reason behind the translator's word choices and how they shape our understanding of Jesus's words today. John 3.36 is translated in the 1560 Geneva Bible. He that believeth in the Son hath eternal life, and he that obeyeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. The 1611 King James Bible, KJV, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. At first glance, the translations look almost identical, but the Geneva Bible says, he that obeyeth not. While the King James says, he that believeth not. This raises a crucial question. Did the King James Bible translators mistranslate John 3.36 to dilute our need to obey by replacing it with believe? Or is there something else going on here? To answer this question, let's take a closer look at the original Greek text. The word in question is apathion, which means to disobey or to refuse to be persuaded. This word means more than just disbelief. It points to an active rejection of the truth. From this perspective, the Geneva Bible translation, he that obeyeth not, aligns more closely with the original Greek text, emphasizing that rejecting the Son of God is a deliberate act of disobedience, not just a failure to believe. If we're focusing solely on the Greek, the Geneva Bible is almost spot on with the original meaning. It highlights that rejecting Jesus is not just about lacking in faith, but about a willful decision to not follow his teachings. Disobedience and unbelief are intertwined in this sense and emphasizes that one who doesn't follow Jesus' commands is actively, willfully in rebellion. Are you finding value in this study of John 3.36? Do you want to dive deeper into how translation choices affect our theology? If so, I encourage you to check out my book, Elucidations, where I unpack this theme as well as so many others, offering a detailed look at how our understanding of God's word shapes our understanding of him and both affects and effects our relationship with him. Now, let's get back into the teaching. While the New Testament is written in Koine Greek, we can't ignore the fact that the writers were Hebrew. This means that much of the text is influenced by Hebrew thought through the lens of a Hebraic worldview. And in Hebrew culture, there's an important concept that we need to understand. Shema, yes, as in hear, also carries the meaning of do. For example, we see this as early as Genesis 3.17, where the Lord God says to Adam, because thou hast hearkened Shema unto the voice of thy wife, and thou hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the day of thy life. In the Hebrew mind, to hear something means you must respond with an action. Adam responded to the voice of his wife with the action of eating the fruit instead of hearing the voice of the Lord God by not eating it. Did you see that? 
There's no separation between hearing and doing, just as there's no separation between faith and the works. If you truly hear, you will act on that belief. James echoes this sentiment in his famous statement, faith without works is dead. James' teaching gives us a glimpse into the Hebrew worldview where faith is not passive. He also reveals a bit of Hebrew etymology by connecting the word immunah, faith, with aman, master worker. The point that James is making is that faith without works leaves nothing. It's dead. This is the much needed backdrop to understanding why the King James Bible, KJV, translates John 3.36 as believeth not. The KJV's choice reflects a Hebrew way of thinking, where belief naturally leads to action, doing. If you believe, you act on that belief. To not believe is to not do. So when the KJV uses believeth not, it implies more than just a lack of intellectual assent. It includes the failure to act on what one hears. So did the King James Version mistranslate John 3.36? The answer depends on your perspective. If you're looking solely at the Greek text, the Geneva Bible's Obey If Not captures the original language more accurately. However, the King James Version provides a richer understanding of the Hebraic worldview, where faith and obedience are inseparable. In this sense, both translations are right. They're just emphasizing different aspects of the same truth. The Geneva Bible is focusing on the accuracy of the Greek word apitheon and highlighting disobedience as a rejection of Christ, while the King James, through its use of believe if not, brings out the Hebrew cultural context where belief is always connected to action. One translation captures the linguistic precision of the Greek, while the other reflects the theological depth of the Hebrew mind. What can we learn from this? Whether your Bible says obey or believe, the message is still the same. Faith in Christ is not just an intellectual exercise. It's a way of life. The Geneva Bible's use of obey if not reminds us that rejecting God's call is an act of disobedience. While the King James Bible, believe if not, emphasizes that true faith must lead to action, reminding us of another of James's expressions. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. In the end, belief and obedience are inseparable. As James teaches, faith without works is dead. And in the same way, belief in the Son of God is meaningless if it doesn't result in you doing what he taught you to do. This video about the accuracy of John 3.36 opens the door to a larger conversation about Bible translations. In my books, I explore how translation choices can significantly impact how we understand Scripture and ultimately how we live out our faith. Different translations highlight different nuances, and those differences can deepen our understanding of biblical truths. So, which translation do you prefer? The Geneva Bible's literal approach to the Greek or the KJV's deeper theological nuance rooted in Hebrew thought. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to dive even deeper into this topic, check out my other video on the King James Bible versus the Geneva Bible, where we break down the similarities, differences, and the impact on Christian faith. Watch it and let's keep the conversation going.